Hi, it's the 4th of December, 2011, and it's almost Christmas. Well, Christmas food, for example, is out there on the shelves. I'm Bernie Goldbach talking to you from Ireland in Cashel, County Tipperary. We're looking just at the pink pages today and a little bit at the Sunday Business Post on the iPod Touch. Mmm, food. Connor O'Neill sometimes watches these quick clips at youtube.com stroke top gold. So this food issue might be of interest to him. I listen to the restaurant guys as well. But I'm inside this magazine looking not only at the food, but at what Dyson has for even room heating. So across the other newspapers in Ireland today, there'll be some Christmas gift ideas. This one's not listed. The Dyson Hot. Look, fastest to heat the room uniformly. I'm on my kitchen table where the... Um, the insulation it sucks. Inside this magazine, some good psychology on what makes a rogue trader. They list the different amounts of money, billions of euro lost, or Nick Barings, Nick at least in at Barings, 830 million. Here's the story. Behind the scenes, facing the possibility of starvation, animals are willing to gamble on a strike at rich policy of risky foraging. And actually, that's how a lot of um, rogue traders evolve. Because humans behave like animals. You lose a significant amount of money, you start becoming risk takers. The rest of this magazine has some really good stuff in it, mostly about food, and that's why I think the FT weekend this weekend is a worthwhile purchase. The pink pages generally are, anyway. Here's some stuff that relates to what you're going to see in Ireland in coverage throughout the week. So Angela Merkel is driving forward on fiscal union. She wants a legally enforceable fiscal zone. Well, the fiscal union she wants. Uh, there will probably have to be a referendum. Ireland has attitude about that. Ireland also responds to any little sneeze the United States has. And right now, U.S. jobs data lift hopes for a steady recovery. James Pulte in Washington, Robert Harding in Philadelphia, and Michael McKenzie in New York point out the U.S. jobless rate dropped to its lowest level since March 2009. That's going to help Ireland, but it's a slow recovery, as the paper points out inside. Pat Waldmeyer in Wii U, China, explains what the Chinese are doing to ornaments. They like ornaments. I'm sure that uh, Liam Casey will have the same um, report where a lot of Chinese ornaments are going up around the country. It's an increasingly popular marketing tool for local retailers. When I was a little kid, we put Christmas decorations up everywhere, and our big players, the big um, customers, were the banks who aren't in a very good Christmas mood right now anywhere. Dead interesting is what a lead story in the life and arts section points out. Lucy Calloway joins the hunt. Here's the story. She went on a hunt for her ancestors. And, you know, the point's this. She under tries to understand the bizarre modern craze of ancestor worship. Ancestors are huge, she writes. Ancestry.com. I'm not paying for that as well. The biggest database of the dead has nearly 1.7 million paying subscribers. Yeah, 30 to 40 bucks a month to get in there. And what, what you get, though, is you actually, I actually have talked to my family, not to the dead people. I actually can keep track of research. And she's recommending MyHeritage.com for a family tree builder, but like it's all done in there, and Ancestry.com. Search the census. Hey, the coolest thing there is I've discovered that my grandmother's name is spelled like four different times, four different ways in the census of her life. And then order certificates, and that costs you a little bit more money. Um, there's a, an event called Who Do You Think You Are Live at the Olympia from February 24th to 26th. I, I would go to that kind of thing. But then again, I have Ancestry.com, so why do I need to? To Till Death Do Us Part, an ideological divide, Chris, John Authors writes about Paper Promises, Money, Debt, and New World Order by Philip Kogan. It's a, it's a book that's out there, 304 pages. It's a lot of ideology. It kind of explains how the left and the right scream at each other. But the book is free from the screaming, the shrieking ideology that afflicts virtually all contemporary debates over money. Clear explanations about what it means to be on the left or the right, to supply side, demand side. And he doesn't make any predictions. I mean, his central prediction of the alternate ascendancy of China is pretty much established um, a book. So if you're interested in the um, McWilliams tomes, this might be the book for you. I'm sure, John, I'm sure David McWilliams actually has read that. Hey, look at this. Jamie Smythe in Dublin, Irish Times writer, files a report that Ireland backtracks on the BOI junior bond uh, losses scheme. 
basically meaning banks are going to get paid to paid. Banks are going to pay uh, from the tax money that they're getting to bondholders, no matter what the seniority of debt. That doesn't go down well with Irish voters, Irish taxpayers. The money section of the pink pages of the Financial Times, interesting stuff. It's towards the back of it, though. That's where I go. Because there's two articles always written there towards the back of the paper. One's by Mike Sullivan. He writes a column called My Business. It says, focus, focus, focus. Beat the recession that way. And what, what's he suggest? Well, he gives a small case study of virtual aviation. And he says, the money is in focusing on high-end services backed up so, by superlative quality for those who can't afford to pay. Now, he writes his column at FT.com, stroke Mike Sullivan. Uh, in a sense, that's what's happening where I work, working third level in Ireland. We're focusing on those people who can pay to stay and uh, trying to provide top service. Um, they're crunching a lot of things when they do that. Uh, that is to say, they're not serving the bottom part of the ladder of academics. Their choice. Why is it so hard to say we need to talk? It's a business challenge. Jonathan Moles writes a story basically of like talking about um, an executive trying to let's, let somebody go, but he is not talking about it. Virtually every other man member of his management team asked the CEO what the guy, uh, who the, the laggard, was doing for the business. And um, at the end of the day, um, there's some difficult conversations, ideas that, have, that come out of Moll's article. Employers need to be aware of the other employee's point of view, or the person's point of view. Because if you try to manage a conversation too narrowly, and you come into a discussion with fixed ideas, which I have been the uh, recipient of, Rather than asking open questions, you actually don't get a uh, full range of um, you know what's actually happening, and it, it's a good story. Um, so if you're running a company, big or small, this business challenges section by Jonathan Malls is a is a worthwhile one. Or ManagerTools.com online. Finally, let's look at how to spend it. I don't have a lot of money now, but I mean, like, there's a lot of good stuff here in the Financial Times about how to spend it. Uh, this jumps right out at me. So that money we've got uh, on all the, the um, obscene profits we've made on, on property, maybe we can take it to earning landmark status in uh, 157 in New York. I mean, look, the dress comes with it. The view comes with it. Um, you have to furnish your own place, though. But just check this out. Stunning, isn't it? This fold-out and how to spend it. You find me an application online that has this kind of color glossy treatment, and um, <laughs> I'll buy it. I'll, I'll subscribe to it. I mean, this is the display advertiser's dream to get this kind of fold-out coverage. Awesome, isn't it? Just awesome. And the rest of the stuff, how to spend it, well, I won't bore you with it. There's, some, there's the next section in the back called Technopolis. Uh, you can read Adrian Wecker's stuff. It's better. Or just save, save your money. Well, I have, have a look here just quickly at Adrian. Uh, he's at businesspost.ie. Um, here's the thing that I don't know if you can see it on the phone here. But this is something that, that, that pertains to anybody who's in Ireland. A story by Pat Leahy, the political editor, is that, bit that voters' hackles are starting to rise. The Business Post has a Red Sea tracking poll, and basically party support's dwindling, especially with Labour. Labour Party in Ireland is starting to really get smacked, and the, uh, the support's rolling over to Fianna Fáil, the disgraced party in Ireland. But, um, you know, the, the big thing is most voters aren't convinced the way that the business is being conducted in politics is the way to go. Big fault lines. Um, now, here's, I'll just show you this really fast on this Sunday Business Post app. If I want to go back to where I just was and I push this back button there, I go to the back of the front end website. Ah! Should I just go back to where I was? Like, it, the Kindle takes me back to where I was. Um, but some, some good stuff here, anyway, on the front page. Budget will not target most child benefit rates. Garda stations in rural Ireland are going to close. We may lose ours here in Cashel. Uh, FHI boss insurance warning over public beds. I mean, our FS, F, FHI insurances have gone up, and on and on and on it goes. So you want some good dismal news by the Sunday papers today in Ireland because there's all kinds of leaks affecting budgets, uh, household budgets, and more. And what Adrian's done today, what Dick, uh, Dick O'Brien's done today in the technology section is to give you all these ideas for stuff to buy for your friends in computer in business gift ideas, parts one, part two, part three. You got to read that, don't you? If you are somebody involved in technology and your special somebody wants to buy you something worthwhile, there's probably stuff there that you want to get in the computer in business magazine. We're spending our money buying ornaments and we're going on to a steam train in Dublin. By the time you see this, we'll be on the steam train between Tar Street and Maynooth and back. Um, the technology we're taking is um, well-proven. 
and um, we're ready in case we have to do the walkies with gear for the day. So finally, stay analog. So like whenever I go to Dublin, I bring back a gift. I brought this one back from the pen corner. And a uh, little girl, a four-year-old, Mia, is drawing toucans right now. That's a shot I'll leave you with. Toucans for Christmas. Bernie Goldbach, www.insideview.ie. Top quote on Twitter says, thanks for listening. Bye for now.